Hello and happy Valentine's Day to you. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories from around Africa and beyond. Because today is special, the show will be centered on every and anything love and entertainment. My name is Osi Godwin. Of course, I'm never here alone. I've got my co-anchors with me, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Oshunkeye. Good morning. morning. Happy morning. Valentine's Happy Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Day. And I, um, I did a rap for you guys. You did a what? A rap for you guys. Can I rap to you? Of course. Do you need Baby, a beat? you hold back. No, you don't need to hold me while you're rapping. You talk back. You shine the teeth <laughs> and your hair when it's all dark. I'm not a Casanova girl. I'm the lover. Always in time. For me, like a shante. I take you places you would never would imagine. And buy your clothes and we toast on the night drinks. A level for the... We'll club it and no night will be. Hey, should we go on? <laughs> I hope you fell in love. Please, you didn't buy me any clothes. What are you on about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a size six to the top. Okay. I'm a size four in I'll the take shoes. I'll places you would uh, never would imagine and you buy you to? clothes. Yeah. That's if you agree. Well, you haven't agreed, so let's let's start from Who's the supposed argument. to agree? You move. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Thank what's your Valentine's Day plan? You're welcome. For me. I'm not sure I have plans. Mm. I don't have plans. Let's just say I'm not sure. The day hasn't plans. ended. You never know. Well, Anything could happen. Know, <laughs> I'm not just sure. Shut your shots. Okay. <laughs> but what's your plan? It's my plan. Okay, I have a lot lined up. I missed breakfast in bed because I was supposed to make that happen, but I got home late, so I wasn't able to sleep over at ours. So that's by the way. So I'll probably do breakfast in bed tomorrow. It's never too late to show a kind gesture, right? Um, so secondly, I'll be doing a lot of work today. And as soon as I'm done with my work, we'll probably have a private dinner somewhere, just the both of us and then. That's mm -hmm. it. So there is the someone. I, I Are you just realizing it? I didn't it. know that. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm still catching up. So maybe a private dinner. Okay. Uh, I've ordered a few things to give her for, for gift. I'm sure they should be on their way to deliver that shortly. Aww. And um, What did you get her? <laughs> what did I get her? I got her a necklace. I got her sneakers. I got her um, chocolate. I got her um, breakfast and um, a pack of breakfast. You know, about yeah, that yeah, one that yeah, comes yeah. with everything. And um, what else? Manifest and of course, I have um, something oh special for her after the dinner. Hmm. Oh my. Okay. This is your, what's your plan? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm in a long distance relationship. Mm -hmm. So, my man's is far, but uh, we're going to be celebrating Galentine's today with a bunch of friends after work. So, some of us who are single by location or single by status, mm -hmm. um, we're going to have fun together. But I, I have to say, though, that I'm not a very um, big fan of Valentine's as a celebration. I think the whole idea is very capitalist. But in an ideal world, we're supposed to love each other every day mm -hmm. and express, our, you know, express, show love like your friend is doing on a normal day. But I know that that's not an ideal world. Mm -hmm. So I think that a, a day like Valentine's is good to kind of tell everyone to stop from what you're doing, remember your loved ones, Special one. and mm -hmm. you know, celebrate that. But if you are, on, your timetable is only about Valentine's, and if it's not Valentine's Day, you're not going to show love, then I think you're kind of missing the point, and it's a bit, I, I, I don't think I want to be in a relationship like that, where I only get gifts or flowers only when it's Valentine's Day. Plus, if you want to do anything special, the idea is probably taking. Now we're going to go to probably packs. So, um, I just I just think that you know if you if you if you want if you want any tips, if you're a guy or a girl watching, like just do something. Maybe on the fifteenth or on the sixteenth, like surprise them, do something special when everybody has forgotten about love. Still keep on, the way you, you are know, showing. It's clear to know that she's engaged one on this table. Like <laughs> it's so clear. Okay, but what would you say you noticed um, for this year's Valentine that is really significant for me? Okay, let me start first since we had single ones um i noticed that we have more um small business owners so mm. the number of people selling packages for mm. um valentine um love showing and all that mm. they became really more and i saw a tweet that said the <laughs> the, <laughs> the vendors are more than those that are in relationship wow so yeah kudos to everyone trying to do one thing or the other for mm. themselves selling small businesses is not easy no matter how you look at it some feel some would say it's just online you put out your stuff on yeah. whatsapp but it's never easy you know you have to deal with making sure the product um 
gets to where it's going to mm. um, timely as well, and it's really stressful because yeah. I know I, be, I do a bit of it. So yeah. kudos to everyone doing that. That's one thing I have noticed yeah. that this year is. If you don't buy anything, you're just weak, wicked as <laughs> <laughs> um, I've also noticed that it isn't just about lovers this year. I've seen a lot of package, like you were talking about, a lot of packages for moms mm. and brothers and siblings and best friends. I and. I, I, I think a new way is like, you know, happening right now. So people It's understandable. Yeah. So people are not as Dirty December, we're just recovering yeah, from it. I, I, yeah. And so, dirty January. <laughs> no, that was clean January. No muddy January. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think people are a lot more um so so I've also noticed that people are um now beginning to encourage more um services than materials, like mm. actually spending time together in mm. like, you know, you know, quality time or physical touch or doing something romantic, like physical gestures, not just that like you buy me some, you know, plastic card or mug that says babe or something like that. I'm not saying those things are bad, but mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's beginning to look like it's more than just material stuff. People mm -hmm. actually taking their creative cap on and mm -hmm. really getting busy. So it's, it's kind of cute. Okay, so I've noticed that... Um I'm not trying to encourage bad girls out here, but I've noticed that um, the bad girls, the slay mamas, are the ones actually getting the Valentine vibe and the gift and all of that. And basically, so, hmm. this is just um, 10, what's the time? How did you conclude that you had the ones getting the Valentine gift? No, because gift? they've been shouting. Like, I've seen a lot of slay mamas that have gone for trips since the 12th. Um, do you understand? Like they travel, they say they're you like mean I'm in Bovish. Hmm. Now nah, I'm talking about the bad girls, the one that get. Why? What these. makes them bad, sister? Hmm. I know. No, no, no. I'm sure you know. Uh -huh. What makes them bad? You guys just like to talk with me. But I'm, <laughs> but talk I'm, I'm, because sure, I'm sure we if, all get if, 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 if I was get able to, I would have actually traveled. And it doesn't mean I'm traveling with anyone. I would have loved to actually travel. Don't worry. Travel, I, okay, but okay. I so let me so say, based on experience, yeah. I've noticed that, okay, most of the good girls I know and the ones that are actually supposed to be taken haven't been taken yet. Mm -mm. Relax, relax. They haven't been taken yet. And most of the bad girls I know are actually the ones saying that, oh, my boo, my boo, my boo, my boo, my boo. Let's be very careful about that. Let me tell you a story. When I was in high school, junior mm -hmm. high school, I think I didn't, I didn't, I'm still small. I didn't grow early. Everybody had mm -hmm. boobs, I didn't. So I wasn't selected. I was always single in high school. We mm -hmm. also like senior year. Valentine's Day, I used to buy myself stuff. Like, I will make the cutest cards, I'll wrap it in a little bowl when nobody's looking, I'll carry my tiny self, put it under my desk. When I get in there, I'll open it up like, oh my God, uh, you won't believe, oh my God, I have a, I'm adorable, whatever. What I'm trying to say with the story is that don't be deceived that they might actually be a boo. So a lot of people are self-loving themselves. There's a meme. There's a meme going on mm -hmm. with Kardashian, with Kardashian's face, Kim Kardashian's face, looking like, oh me on on Friday morning, looking at all the flowers like a surprise, not knowing that I'm the one who bought it. Yeah. There's a lot of that going on right now. Mm -hmm. And but secondly, you know it's just because, You're just because somebody is spending and I, I and that's why I said I don't really like Valentine's Day because a lot of the times it's about showing off and I, it misses the point. Yeah, a lot of the times. These people might get gifts, but is, is the quality of love, is it there? I might not get any gifts, but I'm the most loved on this table. And then you, you get splurged, but after Valentine's Day, you're worried about where he is, he's not doing he's not right, he's cheating, he's, he's doing, doing this, yeah. he's doing that. So let's not get carried away, sis. Especially, I, I hear people in Nigeria, especially, oh my God, Nigerian women are so <laughs> materialistic. You see people putting their relationships based on today. If he doesn't perform, then he's not the one. Like, come on, grow up and understand the bigger picture. So, for example, this is a, this is a, this is a, this is a uh, last thing, last thing, last thing, last thing. Wait, 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 can thing. I just say, no. you, you also have to, you also, you also have to, to, you also have to understand uh, that there is love languages. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in the five, in the five, she's not giving you motivation. In the five love languages, there's hmm. one of them is gifts. And I know people, there's a lot of people out there who gives falls below. Mm. So if you want to show love to them, you don't need to actually give them anything. So don't think that somebody okay. is missing out because they don't get a gift. Secondly, okay. I Secondly. have another observation. Okay. Please. Okay. Which oh, is, cool. if it was the observation. The second observation is that a lot of people now believe in a lot of self-love and I noticed that a lot of people are actually loving themselves more. She said that time. actually. What? Did you say that? Yeah. No, I, I'm talking before doing this stuff. Yeah. Okay, so I've noticed a lot of people are loving themselves more and people are putting out there on social media. So, big okay. shout out to that. And no motivational speakers in 2020. Thank you. Okay. 
So to have an extensive conversation on love, relationship, marriage, and the reality that comes with each stage, we have a couple joining us on the show. This couple dated for eight to nine years and have been married for nine years. You get to find out who they are during the course of the show. One of the most common Valentine's Day practices is proposing to the one. Like you say, she's the one I want to marry, he's the one I'm going to get married to. We'll still get to the part where we talk about um, finding out if a woman should really Proposed to a guy. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not a fan, really. But um, here is a thought on proposals as compiled by Nimi Dekombi. Marriage is a special union between two lovers, and weddings, the ceremony to celebrate the union, is a huge ritual on its own. Marriage proposals have now become a symbolic social trend for almost every engaged couple. And in Nigeria, over the space of the last decade, we have witnessed a rise in the number of public proposals and a great display on social media of the entire proposal process. Nigerian marriage proposals have changed from the more traditional way, where the man would have to reach out to the parents of the bride he is interested in to woo her and seek a hand in marriage. Recently, there has been an increase in the Western style of proposal as some Nigerians have adapted to a Western setting. For instance, the elements of going on one knee by the man and presenting a ring is a more Western practice as opposed to the different marriage proposal traditions of different cultures in Nigeria. There is also an obsession with the size and cost of the ring being used to propose. While this has led to a rise in public marriage proposals with different people trying to be innovative, there have also been situations where people's proposals have gone wrong, either because they used the wrong location, or there was bad timing, or the bride said no. Although a huge number of people still propose in private, many others still choose to propose in a grandiose setting in the presence of strangers, family, and friends. Oftentimes it ends well with the blushing bride saying yes. Other times, the public proposals end up wrong and become a discussion on social media. Planning a proposal to your loved one can be very stressful, but here are some important tips you should know. Talk about marriage beforehand. Have an engagement ring. Tell her family. Choose a remarkable location. Make it come from the heart. We spoke to a few Nigerians who shared how they proposed and how they would like to be proposed to. To me, I see this year, 2020 as a big number, the 2020. So I'll be waiting for this very year to propose to her. And she's a lovely person to me. I think I see her as the most decent lady so ever I've met. So I decided to do this today. Wasn't expecting it at all. We just went for fun and I never knew that He's going to propose to me. I'm very, I'm super excited. Go to one place and sit down and talk from there. We start from friend to ourselves. Like after, after third week, I proposed to her. She said yes. Well, I'm not somebody for much drama, but you know, the the society is changing. You know, everybody wants a lot of drama. Everybody wants it to go down really big, you know. You know, considering that, I would like to give that to my future wife, you know. You know, in some maybe seaside, you know, something of that nature. Surprise. Maybe in a mall. Oh. But I like my things private. It can be on a private beach, it can be on dinner. Just something private and nice. For intending couples, it is important to know their partners and know if they are ready for the next step and also know what proposal would make their partners happy. Some might prefer a private and more intimate proposal and others might love a public and extravagant one. It is important for couples to not get carried away with the whole proposal process but instead focus on the importance of their union. For PLOS TV Africa, Nimi Adek. Okay, so I don't know if... I think I don't have a preference. It really depends. Mm. But make sure my nails are done, basically. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say for me. Mm. I I would prefer private, but public, it depends on how it is done, if it's mm. not so tacky. Because I saw one tacky video going around social media. We sent them, like, what exactly is going on here? Mm. And I, if you say public... I've seen cupcakes on the table, on the bed, and I'm like, what is happening? Well, well, if you say public, do you mean like public, like public, or your friends and family should be there? Yeah, public 
make like public. If, like, go, if it's going yeah. to be grand, let it be grand. Mm. If it's going to be private, let it be private. Let's mm. not do in between. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. Um, for me, I think I'd rather do a private thing, like um, just in the bedroom, just in our own space where we can un actually understand and express what love means to mm. each other. Mm. Not in a public place where you have to put on a show and you're all blushing. Cry on my shoulders and not to other people. <sighs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I think both both is fine. Mm -hmm. I I was uh, I got proposed to in December, and it was private in a public setting where the only ones there was on the beach, like the lady said. Um, and I had already like hinted it before in conversation that please oh don't tell anybody because you never really know, and I don't want to ever feel like in any way I was pressured. Mm -hmm. You know, like sometimes you might have. Reservation. A, a reservation. Yeah. You might you you might have agreed even when you talked about it, but the day he proposes, you yeah, you've seen something you didn't see before, whatever. So I always just wanted my my proposal to be between both of us, and then we can have like a special announcement, keep it secret for a while, which is what we did, keep it secret for a while, then tell everyone and mm -hmm. things like that. But either way, it's fine. If if somebody puts in a lot of effort to make it grand, it depends on your woman. Not in the mall, though, please. Yeah, don't. Uh, it depends on your woman. Which, Some right, people which like, is why I said it has to be really grand. Yeah. And grand is classic. Because I, I know people who like things being recorded. Like, mm. they want the cameras yeah. and everything. So know your woman and then just work accordingly. Okay, you want to add something? No, 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 we're good. Okay, all right. To add some spice to your Valentine's celebration today, here are five evergreen love songs that would definitely set the right mood. Um, enjoy. Five. Brian Adams is a Canadian singer and songwriter. The song is so good, it featured on two albums simultaneously on its release. The soundtrack album from the 1991 film Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and on Adam's sixth album, Waking Up the Neighbors, still 1991. Everything I Do was an enormous chart success internationally, reaching the number one position on the music charts of at least 16 countries. It was particularly successful in the United Kingdom, where it spent 16 consecutive weeks at number one on the UK singles chart and made history as the longest run of its kind in British chart history. It went on to sell more than 50 million copies worldwide. Four. Victor Abimbola Olaya, born 31st December 1930, also known as Dr. Victor Olaya, is a Nigerian trumpeter who plays in the high lifestyle. Though extremely famous in Nigeria during the 1950s and early 1960s, in July 2013, Victor Olaya released a music video remix of Baby Jowo, Baby Mita, one of his classics with Two Face Idibia, an infusion of the old and new school vibe. Three. Turn Your Lights Down Low is a song by Bob Marley and the Wailers from their 1977 album Exodus. It is the only song on side B of the album that was not released as a single. However, a remastered version featuring Lauryn Hill, created as Bob Marley featuring Lauryn Hill, was released in 1999. This cover was commercially successful around the world, topping the charts in New Zealand and Romania, and was nominated for Best Pop Collaboration with Vocals at the 43rd Grammy Awards. It's Thinking Out Loud is a song by English singer, songwriter Ed Sheeran, recorded for his second studio album, X, which he released in 2014. It was written by Sheeran and Amy Wadge and produced by frequent collaborator Jake Gosling. It was released in the US on 24th September 2014 on the album's third single. In the UK, the song spent 19 weeks within the top 40 before peaking at number 1 in early November 2014. It became Sheeran's second number 1 single in the UK. Why? Innocent Uja Idibia, born in Jaws, Plateau State, Nigeria, known by his stage name Tubaba, is a Nigerian singer, songwriter, record producer, entrepreneur, philanthropist, humanitarian, and activist. Prior to July 2014, he went by the stage name Two Face Idibia. He is one of the most decorated and successful Afro pop artists in Africa and is also one of the most bankable performing music artists in Africa. With over two decades in the industry, Tubaba remains influential in the Nigerian entertainment space. 
In 2006, a song, African Queen, was used on the soundtrack for the film Fat Girls, which was released internationally. Listen to the music of love that seeps in from everywhere. The rhythm of two hearts beating as one. The murmurs of passion that consumes us all from time to time. Listen to the music of love as it fills the air everywhere. David Harris. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, and we have the perfect couple for the day. Um, like I said earlier, they dated, courted, and what have you, and have not for about eight to nine years, and have been married for nine years. She's a writer, blogger, and an author, while he's an advertising practitioner. Let's welcome Sally and Owen Dadzi. <laughs> Welcome. Thank Thank you. You. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, happy, happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day. It's a lovely too. day to be here. Yeah. Yes, it is. All right, so speaking of, of the love songs and the top five, so what's your favorite song together? Love songs. <laughs> that song you song. would say, that is our song. That is yeah, our song. song. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so do we have a song? Yes. Okay, there was a song he played for me on our very first date. Um, this I Promise You by NSYNC. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Can, you sing, can you sing a little bit of that song? So? I, I can't even remember it. It's been <laughs> so long. <laughs> I don't do it on live TV. I just close the ears. Yeah. But it was one song that re I related to. And you know, those days you had to use all kinds of things to get to a girl. Mm. So it was music I was using. I kept mm. on playing music, trying to, you know, express myself a lot more. So. Mm. That's how and what song makes you relate to him? Like whenever you hear the song, you just think of him. Oh, a lot. Mm. We were music people. Okay, so, so just give us one. Oh, <laughs> oh uh, it will have to be um, your body's a wonderland. Okay. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he played that a lot. He played that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but so I, my, um, yeah. I, I just want to ask what Valentine's Day looks like for both of you. I mean, you've been together for many years. You've yeah. seen a lot of Valentine's yes, Days. What does that usually look like? Um, do you want to answer that? No, you answer it. <laughs> okay, it's it's some, sometimes it's just normal. We don't do anything. Absolutely. Yeah. We just... It's like any other day. <laughs> yeah. Any other day, we're just staying. And sometimes he surprises me with one thing or mm. the other, or I do the same. So it's not like we have something planned mm. for every Valentine's, no. Mm. Oh, you know how we talked earlier, we talked about love languages and stuff. Do you guys both have the same love languages, or is it different? Mm. Um, I think it's more psychological. We don't usually have words, you know. Mm. We tend to read each other's body languages, mm. you know, and certain things, certain cues. Mm. Like she would just give me a, a wink, I'm like, <laughs> against you know, the whole. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I know what he means. It, I think it's because we've stayed with each other for too so long. Mm. <laughs> I don't want to say too long, but so long, mm. and so we know each other very, very well. Mm. So that's why. Okay, so being married to a woman like her, a woman like her in the sense, uh, I mean, she's a feminist. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. And an open one. Yeah. And some Nigerians have this very skewed mindset when it comes to feminism. They believe the feminists are people that hate men. Monsters. Mm -hmm. Or people that, are not, <laughs> people that are not happily married. Yeah. So how would you describe be, knowing a feminist for this long? First thing, uh, you have to understand the ideology of feminism. Mm -hmm. yep. It's a woman just wants to be equal. She wants to sit on the same table with a man and that's how I see it. Mm -hmm. And the way I was brought up, I wasn't the guy that was kept away from the kitchen. Mm -hmm. you know, my, my dad used to cook during the weekends. It's the weekends where the days the guys cooked. Mm -hmm. So chores, things were just done as your responsibility to handle. It wasn't a woman's responsibility. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a guy's responsibility. It was just everyone's responsibility. So I never saw a woman as less or an mm. equal to me. So when we got married, it was always a balance. Mm. How do how, I don't I don't see how the society would not accept feminism mm. I, because I'm a bit of a feminist myself. Mm. Not, okay. not a bit. I'm a lot. Mm. So mm. so I understand the thinking that mm. okay. I think because patriarchy has been there for so long. Yeah. So it's difficult to just let go of that kind of system. Yeah. All right. So um, would you actually say you're feminist or an egalitarian? 
How are you accent? Me? I said, no, no. I'm talking <laughs> to you right now. Like, would you say you're a bit of a feminist or a lot of a feminist or an egalitarian? No, I'm a lot of a feminist. Mm. Not egalitarian. No. You don't what? believe in equality of all sexes. That's what everybody. feminism is. That's, that's, that's what, what feminism, feminism is. is. No, but egalitarian is that equality of all people regardless of the that's gender. That's what feminism you can is. Be, you, you can be, be an egalitarian and not a feminist. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. 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 So, which one would you, what tag would you rather take? Mm -hmm. Feminist or egalitarian? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, what tag would you rather take, feminist or egalitarian? I'll take feminist. Okay, mm -hmm. great. That's what I'll I, take. I, I, I think what he's trying to say is, is because, you know, feminism has kind of like been demonized a little bit mm. and people want to shy away from that. So now they call themselves humanitarian and egalitarian. egalitarian. Yeah, oh, no, that's not just it. There are people that have tell you, I'm tired of being a feminist. I'm no longer a feminist. From now on, call I'm me. I'm a humanitarian. Oh. Well, yeah, like egalitarian. Egalitarian. Mm, I don't even know what's it. <laughs> it definitely stems from ignorance because yeah. um, the, the, it's the, the, same, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, but just to go just back ignorance. to love, um, a lot of the times, especially for people who are not married, mm. this marriage thing just seems like a huge, complicated layer of, you know, long life commitment with someone. How do you go in there? How do you go in there with confidence to know that, okay, this is this person is the person I want to pretty much put myself locked in for the rest of my life with like how do you know that um well i wouldn't say there there isn't a template for this i believe that everybody has their own love story yeah. so i can use my story with him our love story for everyone but then i feel like okay let me say for me i found freedom i grew up in a very conservative home mm -hmm. and i had to struggle with being myself and doing what, what the society or what my parents wanted. So with him, I was free and I was not afraid to be myself. Mm. So um, then I was comfortable as well. Um, it felt like a constant holiday mm. with him. So yeah, and when you find that one person that you can truly be yourself with, where you just want to run to, you just, all your problems, you're not ashamed to mm. be naked mm. in front of that person. I feel like, yeah. yeah. I think it took the naked a bit too late. Yeah, I'm naked. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> uh, TMI. Okay, so um, we need to go. Time is never your friend when you're having fun, but this is not the end. We will definitely carry on this conversation in the next episode. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do join us again.